Well, hello, my dears. I'm so excited to be revealing what I chose for my curtains in my new living room makeover, my moody living room that I've been working on. I'm going to be revealing that at the very end of this video, but first up, let's dive in. And I wanna give you a little bit of an education on window treatments. Choosing the right curtains or window treatments for your home can be a really daunting task. I do acknowledge that. I don't want it to become so daunting though that you end up skipping this step altogether though, because I believe that this is one of the best ways to give your home the we've moved in, we aren't going anywhere, we live here look. Of all the things you can do with decorating, this is one of the very best ways and it's often overlooked. I find too, especially if maybe it's a bachelor pad situation that pretty much guaranteed there are no real window treatments going on. So it's also considered a very feminine step in the design process. All of the fabrics are considered a feminine step because you're adding in the layers, the textures, the comfort, and that a lot of times the elegance. And so this has some great potential to take the room to the next level. Each room needs to be treated differently and you need to, first of all, acknowledge the age of the house that you're working with and the architecture of the house. A house built in the 1880s is probably gonna have really gorgeous millwork and I would prefer not to cover that up with some boring panels. I would want to do some type of a shade that is just covering the glass of that window and it's leaving that beautiful millwork to shine. A house built in maybe the 50s with some old small aluminum style windows, yeah, we'll probably cover those up completely and do more of a mid-century modern look. So the age of your house does matter, the architecture of your house does matter, and then there's functional things to consider. Do you need privacy? Is this room facing a street or can your neighbors look into this room easily, especially at night, that's not good. You automatically are gonna need to think about how thick that fabric is. Do you need to have the room dark? So is it a theater room or do you have maybe a child napping in the afternoons and you need to totally get that room completely dark? So you're gonna want some blackout curtains. And maybe it's just sound. So you really notice that when you first move into a house and maybe you have tile or hardwood floors, everything echoes, everything's clicking and echoing through the house. You hear people walking down the hall, it's so loud. And besides area rugs, the best thing you can do is add some really great drapery on those windows. Some really thick, heavy fabric will help absorb sound. If this information is helpful to you and you'd love to learn more about interior design, I have a whole course on this. It's called the Elite Decorating Academy. It's six weeks long and I teach you professional level interior design and walk you through everything you would need to know to do your own home or to take clients. I will put the link in the description below. Now, once you've decided on the parameters that you need to stay within because of the architecture or the age of your home, now we need to talk about the different types of window treatments and there's four main ones. There is drapery, shades, blinds, and shutters. So let's talk about drapery and, well, curtains. Those words are gonna be interchangeable. Around here with me, they are. When I say drapery or curtains, they're the same things. I have heard people attempt to define them and it goes something like this. Curtains are the informal word for drapery, which I'm not sure I agree with that. The other thing I've heard is that drapery literally drapes. There's no movement involved. And I tend to think that that maybe is more of a true definition and that curtains open and close. Regardless, I'm not too worried about it. Now this is probably 90% of what I recommend for windows and they generally are sold in panel lengths. You can get them in sets of two. You know what I'm talking about. They are often lined. In fact, if you have the option to have them lined, I say go for it. That is definitely the more high-end option. And then your lining can be sheer, it could be light filtering fabric, or it could be the blackout fabric 
And that in itself is a whole nother decision because it comes in different percentages of opacity. I mean, just get as dark as you can. Honestly, they work fantastic. So I don't think you have to worry if you have a 40% versus a 70% or something like that. But this is the most common solution that I would suggest. I love this for French doors, you know, the sides of French doors or sliding doors, sliding glass door, any big window or medium sized window. If you have a house that was built in the 80s, you may be dealing with the, an arched window that you can't replace. And people do not know what to do with those oftentimes. I've seen people spend some serious money on custom, you know, fan style co window coverings for that arch. If you're dealing with that, I say just, just ignoring the arch altogether and putting your rod right along the bottom of where that arch starts and then just having your regular drapes. I think you're gonna be fine. Other times you'll have a situation where you have multiple small windows grouped and when the builder did that, he was thinking that it would look artistic. And so that's the way you need to think of it. You need to think of it the way you would think of a gallery wall as one piece, one large window treatment. So look at it as one piece and then probably put panels on either side. What you don't want to do is put a tiny little custom shade on each one of those little windows that's not going to look right. Normally you'll see panels that go probably down to the floor, but there are cafe curtains as well. And those are curtains, panels, that are they just cover half of the window. These are really cute in a kitchen, especially over a kitchen sink. And I'll give you a little thrifting hack here. If you find a runner that you really like and you think, oh, I don't have a use for this, but you love the trim, maybe it's crocheted or it has really beautiful lace on the two ends, that would make a fabulous cafe curtain. You just fold it in half, I don't even measure it. I fold it in half, I cut it, I hem it, and then I have two little panels that match and have beautiful trim on them in about 10 minutes. The second and third options are going to be shades and blinds. These two terms are not actually interchangeable. A shade is generally a fabric or maybe a natural fiber like a bamboo that rolls up or it, you know, scrunches up. A blind has slats, has true slats. So vertical blinds or just the little, the metal blinds that you pull the cord and it, it scrunches up together. These are good in certain situations. I love them combined with curtains. If you have a situation where you're worried about what's underneath the window, then I would not do curtains. I would do a shade or a blind. So situations where you have a radiator or you have baseboard heaters or you have a tub or you have a, a sink right underneath the window, go ahead and just do a shade. My favorite are Roman shades. So the fabric is encased inside of the millwork and incidentally that is another time that I love shades or blinds, mostly shades though. I love the shades because you can use different fabrics and houses that have gorgeous millwork, the old houses usually do, should be celebrated in this way. Try not to cover up your millwork. That is beautiful decoration that you have inherited so try not to cover it with curtain panels. Another time you might want to look at a shade is a skylight. Especially if you cannot reach your skylight, I suggest having probably custom shades made and having a remote. If you can reach your skylight, so say it's a slanted ceiling in a little tiny bathroom or something, I suggest a shutter, a fixed shutter, that all you have to do is just reach up and move that little bar. So that is going to actually bring us to our fourth option, which is shutters. And I don't use these very often, but I love them once in a while. They bring in a ton of character. They look especially good in a bathroom. You have a lot of hard finishes in bathrooms and you want to be able to clean them easily. Fabric gets kind of droopy and all the steam makes the dust in the air kind of cake up on the fabric and they just, fabric doesn't do as well in a bathroom, not like wood or some, you know, painted wood or something. So I love shutters in bathrooms, especially over a tub. And you also can get little shutters. They're not, they're not little, but the slats are little. It's a very vintage look and it covers maybe half of the window. Sometimes it's hard to find those little shutters like that. You can find them in salvage yards or I've seen them on eBay. 
So those are the four options. If you're choosing a shutter, a blind, or a shade, the installation hardware is done for you, but if you have curtains, you get to now think about what type of rods you want to use. And then there's finials and there's rings and there's clips and there's, there's whole classes I can teach you on that. But the rod may be covered if you aren't excited about the rod and it's not anything to show off. Maybe you want curtains that just are encased around the rod so when you close them it's completely covered. A traverse rod is something that a lot of custom draperies have where you pull the cord, you know, and it it has a whole system that slides across and closes the curtains. We did that a lot in the 70s. I grew up with lots of traverse rods in the home I grew up in. And then there's situations where the window is extra wide and the curtain rod is actually gonna sag when you close the curtains. And I'm gonna give you my favorite source for extra wide curtain rods, extra strong ones, because I think that can be a huge problem. And it's not always easy to find ones that, that work. Also, you might have a situation where you have a kitchen banquette and you actually have windows that are really close together and they're on corners. They actually make curtain rods that fit in corners for just small panels. I'll link that as well. All right, that brings us to my curtains. Thank you to everyone who weighed in. You guys are the best. I'm gonna just read you the results from the poll that I took last week. We had 8% say they loved this tan fabric. It matches little chairs that I had upholstered. I had some leftover fabric. And 8% of you chose that. 9% of you said no, they wanted this creamy linen. And 11% said switch them out seasonally. Have lighter in the summer, have darker in the winter. That actually wasn't an option, but kudos to you for saying that because I do believe that that is a fantastic way to change out your look for the seasons is to change out the drapes. Just clip them on and then unclip them. Good job. 28% said the block print. These pleated block print curtains that I made previously are still very beautiful. And 43% chose the brown checked fabric. To team block print, do not despair. I am going to be using these in the kitchen. So we'll see them and love them in the future as well. But I did indeed choose the chocolate checked print. It's called Casmir, Casmir, Skylar Check in a chocolate brown. It's from Decorators Best. And if you haven't shopped Decorators Best, I just have to give a shameless plug. Barbara, who started this company, is an interior designer. And she wanted the designer fabric that's available only to the trade to be available to the public. And so she started Decorators Best. It's one of the only places where you can easily get designer fabric that is normally available only to the trade. So check out what they have there if you're in the market. I think you're gonna find some gorgeous options. Now, why did I choose the brown check? Okay, this is a good question. At some point in the design process, every room you're working on needs to have this moment where you do a bird's eye view of the floor plan and you divide the room into quadrants. And rooms can get really out of balance. Balance is really important in interior design. And if you don't pay attention to the physical weight and the visual weight of the different pieces, you can have one corner that just feels really off. This room is actually really off. This living room is very imbalanced. So we have the very dark Lego dresser. We call it the Lego dresser because it's where we store the Legos. And then there's two brown, brown desks on this side of the room, physically giving weight that isn't quite balanced. The couch is helping, but not quite enough. It's visually giving weight as, as well because of the dark colors. The way to throw the balance back is to add some dark brown and what better than to add panels that are basically ceiling to floor. So that's why I did choose the chocolate brown. Now when you're trying to order your fabric, you want to figure out first of all where you're gonna hang that rod and high and wide. That's the thing you need to remember, high and wide. If you have eight foot ceilings like I do, you want your rod about four inches below the ceiling. But you can, if, if you have a nine foot or 10 foot ceiling, go even higher. Raise the rod pretty high and then wide. Put your brackets 
several inches beyond the edge of the window trim. That gives us optical illusion that your windows are bigger than they are, especially when the, the drapes are open. You can't tell what's actually behind that fabric and you just assume it's window. So once you figure out where your rod is going to be, measure down and then you've got three really good options for how long those panels are going to be. The windowsill is the shortest option. That's a very mid-century modern look. Of course, that's what happens when you do cafe curtains. The second option is to take your panels all the way down to the floor. It's called kissing the floor. It just touches the floor. Very formal, very finished, excellent choice. The third option is to bring your length three inches beyond the floor length and it's called puddling. It's very beautiful, very European, dramatic, feminine look. I love this look. The downside to it is that as you're opening and closing these drapes, they're getting a little bit dirty from the floor. So I will probably wash puddling curtains about once a year. For my rod, I got this large, basically, dowel from Home Depot and then I stained it. I don't think it was in a, any type of a curtain section. It was just in the like wood trim section. I stained it and I added a high gloss to it. And then these finials, these are pine, I thought they were pine cone finials, but I found out they're pineapple. So if you're searching for these, you wanna search pineapple finials. I found these and my wooden rings at garage sales. Saved me phew, probably $100 or more. So that was fun. And then I really loved the high contrast look. So I spray painted them gold and I'll link my favorite gold spray paint for you in the description below. But that the high contrast of the rod, the finials and the rings just gave a lot of added interest and it felt, it felt extra custom and high end. So you might want to try that out in your space if you're going for that look. I love the direction this room is taking. It just continues to become more rich and more detailed and custom. The next step is lighting. And I'd love to do a whole video on how to know what to do and the different rules to follow and the different things to help you as you're figuring out lighting to make a room look really, really magical. And I need to decide what I'm gonna do with this bookcase. I'm gonna keep it. Some of you thought I shouldn't, but I do, I do like it. I need to decide, do I leave it? Do I paint it cream? 
or do I paint it this slate tile color that is the trim and the walls in this room, which would give it the, a built-in look? Let me know what you would do in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. We are having one issue. We need to figure out what is going on with the notifications on my channel. I have been talking with YouTube and they have insisted that there's nothing wrong, that when you hit notifications, it doesn't tell you that this channel is made for children, which it is not. So please help me out here. I'm at the end of my rope with trying to get customer service in this department. If this is happening to you, will you email me at sarah at sheholdsdearly.com and tell me exactly what happened. Give me some screenshots. I'm going to take this back to YouTube and try to get it fixed. All right, that's enough of my rant. You guys take care and I will see you next week.